So it's more likely that Hebrew came about from another... I mean, this is just things I've been reading from like linguists. It's all speculation at the end of the day. But we'd ha if we say that if Abraham was in the Mesopotamian Empire, right? And that he spoke Hebrew, we'd have to get some extra biblical evidence to show that the Mesopotamians spoke Hebrew, which we don't have. But I'm not saying because of the lack of evidence that there is no such thing. I'm not saying that. We have, we have cuneiforms. Cuneiform tablets. Yeah, but is it in Hebrew? Of, of, no, no, of the yeah. Sumerians and the Babylonians yeah, exactly. and yeah. Akkadians. Yeah, right, right. So he wasn't Hebrew. I think that was a previous point you were making earlier on. Like, there's no definitive proof. Yeah, there isn't, yeah, there isn't definitive proof. And that's in, it's intention. Yes. But I wanted to ask you something because no, you're. No, it, it, sorry. I don't think people realize this. Yeah. God intentionally done that. It wasn't, done what? So to speak, by accident. I don't know. It yeah. was intentional. The reason why God done that is the whole idea of faith has to be believed. It shouldn't be proven. If it was proven that either you are right, we're right, the Christians are right, then if you didn't believe what we believe, you're an idiot. Oh, I don't know about that because I think there is um, there is an aspect of proof. I mean, if you think about what the what the prophets did, what did Moses do, right? He split the sea, didn't he? Correct. All right. So when he split the sea, why did he do that? What? Why did he split the sea? Before that, what did he do? Any other miracles? What 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 other things did Moses do? What other things? Miracles. He turned his stick into a uh, snake. Into a snake. He did. Um, he he was the one that caused. Uh, what? No, the blood was. We, we we believe that he didn't do it. We believe his brother done it. All right, put that to the side. Let's see. The, the one example is fine, right? Yeah. We have we have those verses in the Quran as well, right? Who do you believe turned the river into blood, Moses? Sorry. Who turned the river into blood? We don't have river into blood in the Quran. That, that bit there, we don't, don't have... have the ten of the miracles that were done in Egypt? We have nine. What was the nine? So, so it says, فِي تِسْعَيْ آيَاتٍ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمٌ فَاسِقِينَ That there were nine major signs that they were sent to Pharaoh and his people. Uh, so but basically, I, I don't want to enumerate them all now, because I might not be able to write. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a pop quiz. But let's take one of them that we should both agree with, which is, for example, the one that he's, he's, he, he threw the stick and it became a snake. And we have that in many different verses of the Quran. And bring your hand um, to your... This is one of the other uh, miracles, right? That he bring your hand to your uh, 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 to, chest. Yeah, and then take it out and it will become very white and bright. Have you got that? Yeah, like, like incredibly bright. It will be a white hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then it says, um, and another part where it says, uh, throw the stick. He, he, well, he threw the stick, yeah, and then when he saw it moving around, Moses, he looked at that and he ran. He didn't even look back after he saw that snake. That's the first time. That's, that's our narrative. Moses ran, you believe? Yeah, yeah, we believe. He, he ran. He ran away. I mean, the first time ever when he saw the burning bush or whatever. When he saw the burning, uh, if you want to call it a burning bush, but really, it's a tree. We believe it was a tree. You with me? Yeah, it was a tree and... Um, when he saw it, he said, there was a calling when he saw it, there was a calling from the right side, you know, and there's, there's a very special place. If we say Sinai, that's Egypt, and therefore Egypt is uh, there has a book of Mubarak there, so it's, it's, means. which means a, a blessed land. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm just Egyptian. That's why I'm trying yeah, to. I know you're Egyptian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he said, "Min uh, al Yeah, from the tree. Ayya Musa, inni an Allahu Rabbul Alamin. Oh Moses, I am Allah. Oh, I am God, the Lord of the worlds. Anyways, that's what the Quran says. It's quite similar. So that. The point I was making, the overarching issue is, yeah. these acted as proofs, like when he threw the stick and it became a snake, right? So that acted as a proof to the people of uh, Egypt, didn't it? No, the stick, no. So what was it then? No, because we believe yeah. for the, they done ten miracles. Yes. Okay. Besides the stick, the stick was a separate matter. Okay. Uh, well, well, where are you getting this from? What? From what verses I use? Why is it a separate matter? What? All no, right. no, because we yeah. believe those. If you, we believe how we went was Moses went to the Pharaoh with his brother. Yes. And he said, "Release my priest people." And he's yeah. like, "Which god are you?" He threw the stick down and became um, it became um, a snake. 
And then Ferris basically said, go jump. And he said, if you don't, next week there'll be all the, all the water in and all the rivers in the world turn into blood. And yeah, that, that, that part of the narrative is not in the Quran, right. the blood part, yeah. So we believe that, we believe the stick was only done in front of Pharaohs and we believe that at the time his magicians were able to copy the trick. Yeah, but in, in our version, or understanding... That we are with that, that he threw the stick down and it became yeah. into a snake. They tried to do that, and but they were they were defeated. No, so what we believe that yeah. was that he told his magicians... Yeah, who Pharaoh, yeah? The Pharaoh yeah. his... Um, yeah. I don't, yeah. Egypt, we believe that Egypt yeah. at the time was the source of all um, witchcraft. Okay, yeah, yeah, agreed. I don't know if the Quran believes in, yes, in yes. magic, but we believe magic is real. Yeah, we believe in magic is real, but it's only real with the permission of God, yeah? And it's only done through certain other things. Okay, so we yeah. believe that um, it's real and we believe it's banned. Yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. No yeah. So he threw it, so Pharaoh told three of his, um, um, three of his servants um, to throw their sticks down. Oh, we have two in the, what? In the version. Oh, yeah, go on. And he threw his stick down and they all became snakes. Yeah, yeah. And then Moses the snake ate all of their snakes and yeah. stayed the same size. Yeah, we were, we were with you on that. I'm not sure about eating it, but it destroyed them somehow, probably probably by devouring them, yeah. By devouring them, we believe the, stick, the size of the, set of the stick remained the same size. Yeah, and we they were exposed by the illusionary tactics from the Quranic perspective. We were, that just showed that there, that just showed that there was that, and we don't believe all of Egypt saw that. We believe the first of the all of what the, all the Egyptians saw was blood. No, good point. Good, this is a good, in, interesting point. Who saw it? Because in the in the Quran, chapter twenty-seven, um, it's, and I'll tell you why this is important. So when it talks about, sorry about this, this is just they're just making a mockery out of themselves. Uh, but what it, it actually that Moses um, summoned the the, uh, the the magicians at a certain time and a certain place. Yeah. So basically, the Quran says, you know, وَحُشِرَ السَّحَرَةُ لِمِيقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ That the Sahara, the, the magicians, came to a certain time and place. وَقَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُجْتَمِعُونَ And they said, are you all congregated now? Now, it's very important. Like right now in the speaker's corner, yeah? He said, are you, this is what, the thing that I said. And do you know what they even said, the Egyptians at that time, according to the Quran, said, Maybe we'll follow the Sahara, we'll follow the magicians if they themselves, or oh, sorry, if they are um, victorious. Obviously, the, the story goes on and he, they weren't victorious. Moses was victorious. But the point is, is that the idea of being a proof to the people, because otherwise, because the, the first thing we talked about is, is there proof required for religion, right? Moses, Mo, Moses, Moses, he made sure that the people were congregated around. Now, it might not be the entire entirety of Egypt, but there will be enough to witness what happened and then pass that information on. Do you see the point? And there was more than one of those signs. <clears throat> so if they missed one sign, they had another opportunity to go to another sign and, and so on and so forth. No, so that's not what we believe happened and quite, quite yeah. um, the opposite. So what we believe happened was Moses went, threw down the stick, the whole thing that we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, through which the Pharaoh said, go jump. And then afterwards, he said, not only... Go uh, jump. Figure of speech. He's basically telling him to go jump. Oh, okay. that, Hold no validity. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Tells him, and not only, he said, not only I don't believe in your fake God, to prove you, he doesn't use these words, of course, basically said that I'm going to make the work of all the Jews even harder. To show you, not only I don't trust him, to make it worse. And then he made the work harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah agreed. And then the Jews what? came to Moses and said, who are you and causing us problems? Yeah, the yeah. Jewish community, the Jews, I don't, doesn't, I don't remember, it doesn't say how many, I imagine it wasn't all of them. Yeah. They came to him and said, who are you just making us more problems? Beforehand, we only fight to do A and now we have to do B and Z. Yeah, so, the, so basically what you're saying is that the Quran depicts, uh, sorry, the, the Bible depicts, the Old, Old Testament, Testament, not the Bible. Uh, sorry, I apologize. The Old Testament depicts uh, the Jewish community as being quite transgressive towards Moses. Yes. Yeah. So that's said That's why we every Passover we celebrate the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things we, we discuss, what we discuss is why God made the miracles. We believe ten miracles. Yeah, yeah. While the Jews were there. Yeah, so, so they can take, see it. We could have taken all this out and then had the whole fun. It was to show because it, it was to show the Jews as well. It wasn't just to show the Egyptians. It was to show the Jews. It was more. It was actually yes. it was to show the Jews more than the Egyptians. The Egyptians were just collateral damage, so to speak, even though yeah. being God said. Now, okay, this is where there is some difference in 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 in, in the discourses. Because for us, 
You know, and for us, when Moses went to, to, to when Moses went to the Pharaoh, he went to the Pharaoh with the intention of trying to prove to him that he was a true prophet. And with the intention of trying to bring him and people that followed him into the religion of oneness and submission. Uh, he was, it wasn't a frivolous interaction. It wasn't just let my people go as the Bible says, right? For This is why I think there is a crossroads. Because in the Bible it's like, oh, let my people go. That's not all that he said. He did say that. We believe he said that. Do you believe it was more than that? But we believe no. The main reason why Moses came to, to Pharaoh was to try and convert him. Basically, because Pharaoh himself believed he was God. And this was a polytheistic belief that he believed. He said that, in the, you know, in the Quran it says, Yeah, he believed in God. That's what we have to do. Do you know any God other than me, right? So, so we have a similar word thing where he also. Yeah. And one of the things I like to get back is that one of the things that Pharaoh used to do, and it sounds like the golden, I apologize now, yeah. the Egyptians at the time weren't very bright. Because it yeah, says possibly. it's still up. Well, they were clever enough to make those tall buildings and pyramids. What? No, right. but he says, he says that... <laughs> Don't worry, I'm, I'm, by it's the way... It's small on the I'm top, it wasn't I'm, small. I'm with you on you this. Lose spec. No, I'm one with of you the this. ways that he used to yeah. prove the people that it was God, yeah. he would never go to the bathroom. He used to go to the bathroom in the mornings. Yeah. Before everyone was awake, and then during the day, he'd say, I was a human, I'd have to go excuse myself. So one of the things that Moses did to like um, throw him off his game, Moses met him at the one time, one time one of, with the, in the early on interactions, when he was, um, when, when he was um, going to the bathroom, he used to go to relieve himself in the, in the river. So Moses, early in the morning, met him to throw him off his game. So to throw him off his game, to show, we know, we know your game. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah, yeah. But, but, what is my point? The point I'm making is, going back to the first thing that we were saying, right? Yeah. It's proof. So Moses came, his mission was to try and prove, well, to tell the people to worship one God rather than the Pharaoh, right? And also to tell him to get his people to go but also to prove to them through miracles. So for example, those things that happened in Egypt, we would consider them all miracles. The point I'm making is proof and faith are not dichotomous. They're not um, exclusively, mutually exclusive entities. They come hand in hand. And that's why basically we believe as Muslims, right? No, but I, yeah. you're right in theory, you're correct. Yeah. Yes, there is um, faith and um, proof. Um, proof doesn't, they don't have to be one or the other, but they can't be absolute. Fine, there's always going to be some kind of There has to be some doubt, you agree on that? Not doubt, I would say there has to be some faith. There has to be some faith, yeah, right? yeah. it can't be absolute. Now, it's, it can't be, uh, you agree on yeah, that, yeah. as Jews we believe it's fundamental. Yeah. It, it can't be 100% proven. That's why there's questions that we don't... We, that we there's have. always going to be questions that there need to be... be otherwise yeah. it's not faith. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Right, so and we agree, the Quran said the first thing, the ones who believe in the unseen. We haven't seen the unseen, but we have to believe in it, right? Yes, but no, look, the reason why this is important, um, we talked about kind of the Moses story and its implications for proof and religion and so on. We're saying that in the same way, look, if you couldn't be a Jew without believing in Moses, right? In what sense? Could you be Jewish and not believe in Moses? And Moses as what? As a prophet? As, yes. You can't, sorry, no, you can't. Oh, yeah. Yes, no. I was about to say what's going on. <laughs> no, 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 you can't. You have to believe in Moses, otherwise... Um, you have, yeah. But you, you agree with me, right, that there were some people of the children of Israel yeah that disbelieved in Moses. When? Pardon? When did they disbelieve? With, with him in his presence. When, when they were in Egypt, after they left Egypt, at what point? At any point. Seeing his proof, seeing him talk in the, his preaching and so on, they didn't okay, accept so them. We believe. That every single one. We, no, no, we believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I said, after the first time we met the pharaohs, the Jews accosted him in the street and said, yeah. who are you making us from? Yeah, yeah. And then we believe that we were, there was templates the last, the, okay, so what we, I'm just going to go to the last two because it's relevant. We believe that there was a period of darkness. Yeah. Each, do you believe in that? We don't have that terminology. But it's not, it's not that we don't agree no, with it. So yeah. We believe in the period of darkness that was for, I think, a week. Okay. Give me my numbers a bit off. Yeah. But, and for three days, the Egyptians were frozen, so to speak. They couldn't move. And we, we believe in that time, four fifths of the Jewish people died. They were disbelievers. We believe in them. They were disbelievers. Yes, they yes. did not believe that. They, they, after being in Egypt for hundreds of years already, yes. in slavery, been, every single day, every yeah. single year, being promised to be liberated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's disheartening. We can't understand that. Yeah, yeah, but that's not that's so no we, excuse. Correct. We also me. can't understand that. No, no, no. It's no excuse. What? No. Okay. So how does how does God deal with them in the Old Testament? 
I'm going to get there. I'm going to yeah. get back to you. Yeah. It's not an excuse. Yeah. But that, so we believe during that time, yeah. four fifths died. Okay. And during the period of darkness, how did they die? What, what, what way did they die? I don't. I don't remember, but I, I'm imagining just dropping down dead. Okay. I'm guessing. I don't, I'm just Re guessing. No, yeah. I, I can't recall anything in the Bible saying how they died. That's why I was asking you. But the, we, the Quran but, has a, a narrative on that. So we Do believe, you know what the narrative is? To answer your question, yeah. the people who didn't yeah. believe, we believe most of them didn't believe it. Yeah. We believe the ones that actually left were, were only 20%. Okay. Now, going back to what I was saying, that it's not an excuse. There's a fundamental point that we, we believe that when we die, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it works, but you probably when we die, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a court case upstairs. Yeah. What? Day of judgment. Day of judgment. I don't know how you. We believe, we believe that we're gonna have we we believe that we're gonna we're, we're gonna meet the big rabbis from last one 200, 300 years ago, and we, they're not gonna, they're gonna look at us in shame. Not we're gonna look at them in shame. Because we're okay. gonna say to them, you never understood the challenges we have. And it goes the same way. We are we believe. Where does it say that in the Bible? What? Alex Salam. How are you doing? It's, it's not. It's not. We. It's more script. It's not. It's more on um, commentary and scripture. Okay, right, right. Talmudic. Yeah, Talmud. We. we or Mishradic, would you say? What? I don't remember where. Midrash. I, I don't know. It's Talmud. It's the Talmud. Not Why me. would it be? No, it wouldn't be the Talmud because Talmud doesn't really do commentary. So. No, no. It brings. The, the Talmud does do commentary. No, it does, but on mostly on uh, halakhic issues, right? What? If it's not. The, it's not. The Talmud is starts on halakhic issues and. It goes, it goes everywhere. Right? Goes I agree. Everywhere. I agree. I agree. But I, from my, my understanding, right? So it's more the well, midrash. The one, what, what I was learning a few, year, a few yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. it started off talking about the laws of Pesach and yeah. the laws of lending money. Yeah, yeah. It, it can jump to proof points. Yeah, but it's mostly jurisprudential, right? What? It's mostly law-based. It's yes, but yes. there's other things in yeah. there as well. So it mentions there. Well, that they mentioned there. It mentions that. So one thing is, we're big believers that we don't judge the generation that passed. Any generation that we we're not supposed to judge anyone, right? That's separate, but it's a big point that like, you're not supposed to say, why did he do that? Why did why did Abraham not do this? Why did David not do this? Why did Moses? We're big believers. We don't ask those questions. So that, what I'm saying is that when it's not an excuse. No, we have that in the Quran as well. As well. Well, you're, going back to the ones that died. you're right. This it wasn't is a an this is a generation that has passed away. And we don't. Talk, we kasab. don't judge it. Yeah, so uh, back your Sorry. Point. Yeah. That you're right. It's not an excuse, but we also don't judge it. It happened. Yeah. God decided that. We don't question it. We don't question the decision they made because we don't understand. But it wasn't an excuse. If it was an excuse, they wouldn't have done it. Right, right, right. But the point I'm making to you is disbelief in a prophet yeah. disqualifies someone from salvation. Dis They're not worthy. No, not necessarily. So you're saying that you can believe, disbelieve in Moses, so you would be a good person. What? Disbelieve in Moses. No. Okay, uh, good. No, and yes, and no, I'll explain you. There's a problem that's created in many religions, mine and yours as well, that we've, we've accepted that. We've accepted that somebody can be a Muslim and do what, or a Jew and commit this sin and not this sin. We have decided between ourselves that this yeah. is a worse sin and this is a better sin. No, but what? Believe, just believing and disbelieving on a prophet disqualifies yeah. you from being a Jew, no? No. So, so you can you can be a Jew that does not. I'm not talking about ethnic. I'm talking about religious. A religious practicing Jew, you can believe in that without Moses. So here's so now to answer your question. Yeah. I'm going with. In, in, nowadays and there's many nowadays I'm, I've seen, there's many people that seem that the certain certain sins if you commit them you can no longer be a Muslim. Yeah. People. And there are some, some things that certain Jews can do. If you don't do them, you will be disqualified. I don't believe in that. I no. So here's my thing. I'm so it's all ethnicity then. No, I I hate those people. Okay. If you want to claim you're religious and you commit sin, everyone's sin. No, I'm talking about. So what makes a Jew a Jew? Religious Jew. Religious Jew. Now everyone sins. So if you believe in two gods, is that all right? If you go I, against the Sabbath, if you go, if you go against the Ten Commandments. No. If you go against the Ten Commandments, I don't understand why you want to be. If, if you, you don't, but if you believe in two gods, no, yeah. if you believe in two gods and keep all the other commandments, I don't understand you. There's a physical. There's a no, no. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't keep any commandment. What? I've, you don't believe in the commandments. If you're not, then you can't call yourself a religious Jew. Yeah, that's the point. Where does the commandments come from? It comes from Moses, no? What? Where does the commandment come from? No, I, I get your question, but I'm trying to explain yeah, the same yeah. point. Nowadays, there's, there's certain things, if you saw a Muslim do, you would still call them a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. certain sins, if you saw them do, you wouldn't. Yeah, and same with you. And what? that's why there's a law of apostasy in the, in the Deuteronomy, chapter 17, right? What? what? There's a law of apostasy. If someone it says it in the Jewish courts, now that there isn't the Sanhedrin. I understand that, but this. So my point to you is you're asking what but sins it's, can it's, they do? It, it, no. There's a law of death. Kill them in your home, it says. What? If you have two witnesses, you kill them. 
Only in the, in the Sanhedrin. I have no problem, but they we still... We don't have that. Why so. would you kill them if they did... If they... No, no, there's rules. For yeah. a Jew, you have... Sorry. I'm not saying there isn't rules. I'm no, just saying you that... you have rules yeah. in a Muslim country where yeah. they're following the Quran, they should peep. Yes, yes, yes. You don't believe... You believe apostles should be... People who are, should be killed, correct? Apostles? No, um, apostates. Apostates should be killed. Correct? I was going to say apostates and... Uh, that's, it's, 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 it's not like this. I mean, we have rules like you said, right? What? Like you just said with the... No, stealing, cutting off a hand. Yeah, yeah, that's but in I the Quran. I don't see you going into jail because you believe that right, you're now right. in... You're not, you believe in Saudi Arabia. Same thing, Muslim. same thing. Right. I'm going back yeah. to my point. I, no. But no, no, but what, the point I was making here yeah. is that if you're an apostate, if there's a penalty, there, yeah. there, you, there would not be any penalty yeah. unless there was an issue there. So, so I go... So what I'm trying to tell you is, I don't... I, if somebody calls himself a religious suit, he's entitled to. This is, I'm not going to argue. Like I said, if somebody believes in Jesus as his Lord and Savior and then claims that he's a religious Jew, I think it's like wrong in the head. Yeah, but he don't believe he's a Jew. What? That disqualifies him from me. He becomes a Christian then, right? I don't understand him. I'll talk to him and I'll try and understand his point. He wants to continue self calling himself yeah. a Jew. No. Most Jews won't consider him I get to be it. a Jew. But that's I don't go around. Point, I try not to. I don't go around. I'm not saying what you do. To be uh, judge uh, jury. Yeah, I, I get it. But what I'm saying is that you see, this is the Quranic message to Jewish people, religious Jews. I'm not going to tell you my opinion. This, let's go straight to what the Quran says. It says basically, the, Jew, the religious Jews have a, a historical track record of disbelieving and even killing, you know, uh, prophets. They have, the, they have this record. Well, okay, we can agree to one, maybe no, not I two. No, I want to know, I want to know, killing the prophets, who does the Quran say we kill? No. It doesn't say names. It doesn't give names. No, I'm just yeah. interested. Yeah, it, it says that no, there were some Jewish people in times, there were prophets that came and they killed them. Uh, th th this is in chapter 2 of the Quran and chapter 3, where basically these, they were killed and they disbelieved in them. And yeah, this is the narrative, that there's been disbelief throughout the years. And, and basically the question is, well, if, if this is the cultural legacy of, of uh, religious Jews, don't repeat the same mistakes again by having the same attitude towards someone from a different tribe. In this case, Muhammad Sallallahu Because he's from a different lineage or from a different tribe. He's an Arab, he's not ethnic Jew, and it's a little bit different. But the same methods of proving his message are there. So in other words, the same way that Moses had, the same kinds of ways, that you can be convinced of Moses as a prophet, we would postulate to you is actually more profound when it comes to Muhammad. So in other words, why would you not believe in a, another prophet, even Jesus? I mean, you, we, skipped, we skipped one, right? Jesus Christ, right? Okay, let's start. You have a stronger argument with Muhammad, but if you want to go down through Jesus, I'm unhappy to, but I'm just telling you. Yeah, but we don't believe it was God. You have a stronger argument if you, go, if you jump over Jesus. I, no, I don't think we should. I think that all of them are all that the Quran says, We don't make distinctions between all the prophets. Jesus existed, Muhammad existed. We believe both of them left cultural legacies. Some of them were misinterpreted and whatever, like with the, with the Christian case. They elevated him to the, to the, to the uh, level of God. We don't say that he is God. We don't say that he's the son of God We're in that sense. No. The biological sense or any of that. So he's not, we don't believe in the Trinity. We don't believe in all of that. We're saying that Jesus Christ existed. Clearly he, he came from a Judo background, you know, a Jewish background. He was born Jewish. Yeah, or yeah. you don't agree with that? No, we do agree. You it's agree no problem. I, say, I don't have an issue with no, his that's lineage. I yeah, in fact, it, it makes sense because his, his lineage is a Jewish li, li, no, uh, uh, Israelite lineage. Yeah. So, we believe in that, yeah? We believe that he actually comes from the lineage of Aaron. Aaron? Yeah, Aaron, yeah. What, the chief priestess? No, Aaron, the, the brother of Moses. Chief, he was the chief priestess? Yeah, 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 yeah. You believe Jesus came from Aaron? No, 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 he's from the lineage of, right? Which means, which means he descends from it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, we believe in that. So, Christians also believe that or you don't? Huh? Know? Oh, no, they can't. Interesting, I never knew that. Yes, so now you've got Jesus Christ and you got Muhammad. Now they both. And they believe Joseph was his father, or you don't know who his father. Well, no, we don't have Joseph. Uh, we're carpenter. We only have Joseph, the one that's in Genesis uh, narrative. We but you have, have Mary, though. Yeah. Why? <coughs> Pardon? Why do, you have, why do you have the mother, not the father? We believe he, we believe in immaculate conception. We believe that he came from. Uh, that was one of his miracles. That he came from uh, without uh, virgin, from a virgin woman. Ah, you do believe in that. Yeah, we believe in that. Yeah. But who was the father? Okay, who's the father of Adam? We believe he was made a grown man. Yeah, all right. So, so he he has no father, right? Correct. And he has no mother. 
Correct. Yeah, so the Quran says in the same way that, Je that Adam had no father and no mother, Jesus, God can do it, right? No, yeah, yeah, I just didn't know you believed yeah, that. We believe, yeah, yeah, we believe. Yeah, yeah, we believe in that as well. So we believe but that. But you believe Mary was his mother or was it? Yes, Mary was his mother, yes. But you believe he doesn't have a father? Yeah, he does not have a father. No problem. So how can he come from the lineage of, lineage of, uh, of, uh, of Adam? Mary. What? I know, but according to Jewish... Matri lineage. We go through the ma male, not the father. Yeah, no, no, but it's matri lineage. We're saying that Mary came from that lineage. I know, but we believe that... So you don't believe he was a Levite, you believe he descended from them? Yes. Um, you believe he was a Levite or not? We, we believe that he was a descendant... But he wasn't a Levite himself. What's, what's a Levite again? Tell me the, the descendancy of Le Levites. You have to be a son, not a daughter. You have to, you, your father has to descend from the, from the descendants of Levi. Of, of, um, there was, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what's interesting about that, yeah? yeah. Um, you know, the Quran, whenever he says, whenever, whenever Allah speaks about Jesus, could you mind if I just yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. This belief um, with Mary, Immaculate Conception, is both yeah. Sunni and Shia belief? Yes. yes. But you see, we're saying that these are all prophets. Jesus is on this, for us the same level as Moses. Just as Moses existed and he showed prophet as uh, signs and miracles and, and all that. Where does Muhammad come in that? He's the final prophet. You see the point? What? Do you see the point? But one thing that puts them all in the same category, if you like, yeah. is that they all came with the same message of believing in one God and worshiping one God. Going back to the commandments and so on. Very interesting. Do you see? I, I hear what you're saying. I never knew that. I thought I didn't realize you believed this. Pardon? I didn't realize you had. I didn't realize. I thought you had a different. Um, belief. Yeah. So, 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 you believe in David? King David. Yeah. He was a prophet. Yeah. What? He was a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Solomon was a prophet. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah we know that from Adnan no, Rashid. Yeah. All right. So these are all prophets. Uh, Abraham. I don't think the Bible says he was a prophet. But put, put this to the side. Oh my What's god. The cavalry has arrived. Cavalry? Hello. No, some Jewish people there. So my don't need any help. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. So we believe in this. You don't believe Abraham was a prophet? We believe he was a prophet. No, the, the Bible doesn't I can't remember where it says that Abraham was well, a prophet. You believe he is a prophet. Yeah, we do, yeah. But but the point I'm making to you is that why believe in some and not some? Like, how do you distinguish, if I were to say, prove to me that Moses is a prophet and Muhammad isn't, what would be your way of doing that? I'll, I'll, I'll flip it around a second. It's more, you have to prove he was. With the idea of prophet, it's not, you have, he has to be proven as a prophet, not that he's not a prophet. So you're asking me to prove he's a prophet. I can't, he's not, he proved- To Moses? No, to prove that Muhammad and Jesus lied. No, 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 I was asking you, yeah, how do I what do criteria do you use yeah. to say that Moses was a prophet and Jesus and Muhammad weren't? The Old Testament says. Where does it say that Muhammad is not a prophet? It doesn't, that's the point. We believe exactly the point. We believe yeah. a prophet has to be proved, not disproved. Yeah, So right. unless, you're asking me to disprove Muhammad. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I want, if you want us to believe in it, you have to prove it. Alright, you see, um, in, uh, there's, I, I, I can't remember if it's Deuteronomy 18, I'm not talking about 18, 18. But in the end of the verse, yeah. uh, let me get the verse, alright? Let me get the verse. It's, it gives us a criteria, and let's use this criteria. Is this a fair enough criteria, yeah? I think it's, it's chapter 18, verse 21, but let me, let me find this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it, yeah? All right. <coughs> you with me? Yeah, yeah. I I it, all right. It says this, Deuteronomy, yeah? yeah. Uh, it's chapter 18, verse 21. You may say to yourselves, yeah? How can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? This is what we're looking for, yeah? Are you with me? Yeah, I'm going to get it on my phone. Yeah. From the 21, is that right? Yeah, yeah. If what, listen, listen, this, this is the criteria, and I think if, if we stick to this criteria. So, what, what um, paragraph? What's it says, uh, chapter 18, you said? Or? Yeah, I think verse 21, 22, yeah? No. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, 
That is a message the Lord has not spoken. Yeah? That prophet has been... Uh, that spo uh, prophet has spoken presumptuously. So do not be alarmed. That's what the Bible says. Yeah? So it gives us a criteria. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm just looking at context. So. Yeah, look at the context. Are you, what, what are you on? I'm going to go through the whole chapter. I don't want to misquote anything. What? Yeah, Deuteronomy 18, 21 to 22. Yeah? Right, so give me two minutes. Let's yeah, yeah, take your time. Through, I don't... Let me just, uh, as you're saying that, let me read. You, shall I read the full context? Yeah? So if we look, yeah? Verse 17, the Lord said to me. I'm just going through the whole thing. Give me a minute. Shall I read it out loud? Should we read it out loud? I'm starting from the beginning of the thing. Oh, uh, from Deuteronomy 1. Uh, sorry, uh, verse 1, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let me read it. Let me just see it. I don't know scripture by heart. Shall I, shall I read out to those? Let's read out from like verse 17. Oh, sorry. Let's read out from verse 14, right? Because it says the prophet. This is interesting. The nations you will dispossess listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me among you. I'm, I'm not going into this. We've done this to death, right? This one. From your fellow Israelites. You must l listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of assembly when you said, Let us not hear the vo uh, voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire anymore. Or we will die. Verse 17. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. Okay, well, this is something which, it's a, it's a translation which is problematic in my opinion. Because it says, Lachem. And, and, you know, we've been through this. Yeah, already. we've been through that. We don't want to go into that. But the point no, at the end, no, the I'm point not, at the end yeah. says this. You may say to yourselves, and this is the point. How can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet, he's, this is the answer. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. Now, it seems to me the Bible is saying that the best way to assess the truthfulness of a prophet is through the prophecies of that prophet. If his prophecies are false, then that prophet is likely to be false. But if his prophecies are true, then his prophet, this prophet is likely to be a true prophet. Would you agree with this? Yes, but there's two points. The earlier one is said from Lachem, which is still, a, which we're not going to argue about yeah, that yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's still a big point. So you yeah. understand? We can't agree on that. Yeah. But you want to know why we don't believe? That's a, that's so that. First of all, if we use the word Lachem, then it could say Jesus might have been a prophet, but it can't be Muhammad. Because yeah. He was Jewish. Yeah, yeah. So, so no problem. So to get rid of Muhammad. Respectfully, yeah. the word Lachem comes in. He yeah. has to be one of us. Muhammad wasn't. So let's go then go back. No, to no, I, I would, I would, add to, I would, I would just, I don't want to go to eighteen eighteen, right? Because yeah. it's been done to death. Exactly, but that's uh, fun, but it's an important point. It's an important point. I just want to focus on eighteen. Look at him. Oh, sorry. That's right. Uh, eighteen twenty one and twenty two. Eighteen twenty one is given our criteria for prophethood. How do you know if a prophet is a true prophet or a false prophet? You know through their prophecies, because no one knows the future except for God. So if they're, especially in specific things, if they come and they say things are, are going to happen and they don't happen, then it's false. So that's why I say to you now, the Quran says, on many, prophecies yeah. did Muhammad um, yeah. come true? Yeah, so the Quran, for example, if you look at chapter 30, verses 1 to 6, he made a prediction, or the Quran makes a prediction. Allah, we believe God makes a prediction. It says, The Romans have been defeated in a nearby lowland. And by, after their defeat, they will become victorious. In three to nine years. To God belongs the affair before and after. And that day, the Muslims will be rejoicing. And this is the, this is the promise of God. Look how emphatic it is. And God does not break his promise. So clearly, there's evidence, even extra Quranic evidence, extra... Uh, Islamic evidence which indicates that this battle took place eight years later and as the Quran says it materialized that the Romans defeated the Persians even though that they were on the brink of defeat that's one example in the Quran but other ones for example chapter 24 verse 55 uh, you know 
what Allah says in the Quran, وعد الله لاستخلفن الذين you know it says in the Quran that God has وعد الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لاستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي تضالهم yeah so basically the Quran says here that God is going to promise for those believers and the ones who do good works that he is going to allow them to be successes over the land and he's going to give them power over that land we're talking about the Arabian Peninsula and clearly this is military and it could go this way and it could go that way no one can predict for sure this is going to happen if it doesn't happen then there's a problem the Quran is even more specific in chapter 48 of the Quran where it talks about how the Muslims will enter Mecca and finally conquer it as we know now it's been conquered مُحَلِّقِينَ رُؤُوسُهُمْ ومقصرين لا يخافون that they will be shaving their hair and cutting it meaning in the in the Hajj pilgrimage you have to cut your you have to either cut it fully or you have to trim it so they will be doing something and when you're doing Hajj you're not fighting so you, you'll be coming in it will be a peaceful entrance if you like and that's what happened there was no uh, major fighting there were skirmishes but the Muslims were allowed to do Hajj or pilgrimage these are some of the uh, some of the verse in the Quran, there's others like you know in the Quran in chapter 56 uh, sorry uh, chapter 54 yeah in Surah Al Najm where it says about a battle, a battle of Badr yeah as, as the revelation uh, as Babu Nuzul reveals that they are going to run away in other words, the enemy are going to run away. And this was the first uh, fight between the Muslims and the pagans at the time. Happened in 313, uh, sorry, with three, 313 fighters. And they had a thousand more. And it was unexpected that the Muslims would be victorious. This was the Battle of uh, Badr. Badr. The first one, and, and, this, and they ran away after that. The, the, you know, the, the disbelievers. And this is attested in history. So these are some of the examples. But more so, the Hadith literature is quite clear about where Islam is going to spread. The Prophet ﷺ, he narrated in the hadith that's narrated by Thawban The whole earth was projected in front of me And I saw its east parts and its west parts And my, my uh, nation will possess its lands What has been projected of it to me In other words, when he's talking about the Islamic expansion He's talking about a westward expansion and an eastward expansion if you just have to look at the map and see where Islam spread but more specifically Allah the Prophet Muhammad he said he referred to Yemen in a possessive pronoun Allahumma barik lana fi Yemenina he said God give us you know uh, or blessings in our Yemen our Yemen and Sham which is basically the whole region including but it, look at Jerusalem right the Prophet said, Count six things before the Day of Judgment comes. Moti thumma fatha bayt al maqdis My death and then, and then the, the, um, the conquest of Jerusalem, which happened at the time of Amr al Khattab. Now, the question is, when has there ever been really a time when the Prophet said something and it didn't come true? Or when the Quran says something is going to happen in a specific time and place and it doesn't come true? There, there is no example of that. Whereas you can find that in other religions. You can find that in other religions and we can talk about that you know like for example the Olivet Discourse in the New Testament the Olivet Discourse in the New Testament you have you're not going to find me arguing about it yeah 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 right so like, just just look it up but the point I'm making is this is where you would be able to falsify like you know the, Je the Jehovah's Witnesses at that time they had the Great Depression 19 1877 or something they said the world's going to end in 1877 it didn't and they called it the Great Depression. So you can see where someone who claims to be a prophet gets it wrong and then their theory is falsified. But the point I'm making to you is that going back to Deuteronomy 18, 20 to 21, it's clear here that the criteria is the prophecies. And what we're saying is that we have this. Uh, the quick answer yeah. is the word the fact. No, yeah. no, You're not happy with that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> That's the quick answer. You're right, it, de it demands more. Oh. Long time, long time.
it demands more, it may demand more research, and that, that will be true. That is true. Because even someone who brings one of the signs, let's say there's two signs, let's say we both agree, there's two signs, there's the sign that has to be Jewish and it has to come true. Even if somebody comes with one sign, we still have to address it. Yeah, what we were saying that the phraseology, let's agree that it could mean, lechem, could mean from them, i.e. the ones who are Jewish, and it could mean not, it's not like that. But in either situation, what we're saying is, you still have to contend, because the verses in verses 20 and 21, is talking generally about a true prophet. How do you know? What we're saying is that the criteria has been met. What I'll say, or what I'll leave with you, is a book that my friend has written called The Forbidden Prophecies. It's free of charge. Download it online and look at some of the prophecies that the Prophet Muhammad has made. And remember when you're, making, when you're looking at those, the verses of Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 to 21. And be honest, ask yourself, are you going to repeat the mistake of those Jews that disbelieved in Moses? And if you believe in Muhammad, you have to believe in Jesus, because you know why? Muhammad. That's what you believe. Yeah, because Muhammad came with the. With the I think. I think yeah. you know me by now. I'm not a fanatic. I'm open-minded. Yes. I don't come with my. I'm always willing. To, and I'll look. I'll look what you have there. I'm always open. Do you want me to give you my number? What? I'll give you my number. I put. Don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> otherwise, I'll be in big trouble. And then you can do it uh, in your own time. But Forbidden Prophecy is a book that my friend Abu Zakaria has written, free of charge from the IEO website. You can download it. And you can also get it as well. And so, yeah. What's your last name? Uh, hijab. H I J A B. That's it, right? Yeah, let me. Well, how do I put it? Oh, you got it. Yeah, you got it. All right. Nice one. Look at it and tell me what you think, bro. Yeah? For, you know, book. It's a very good conversation. Thank you very much, man. Yes, uh, I don't know who's to whom these belong to. It's great seeing you. You too, my friend. Thank you very much. Yeah? Be safe. You too, man. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the story.